I have here, I'm gonna do a video real quick on one of our butterflies that just emerged. And tell me if you see it. Comment down below if you see it. Um, I did doing a little photo shoot while he's drying his wings. Sorry, this is inside my house, but guys, here is the hammock skipper. This is Polygonia Leo. Sorry for the shaky video here, guys. All right, this is Polygonia Leo. Uh, guys, we have been ra raising these things now. Um, I don't know if you remember, if you saw some of my videos on the Fulvis hair streak. Uh, we found Fulvis hair streaks in a park nearby our house and took some females home. They laid eggs and we are able to raise Fulvis hair streaks on a plant that's an exotic tree that's very common in our um, landscape tree. It's called Indian Pongam. And every spring, these Indian Pongam trees flush out all new growth. And the cool thing is, uh, these Indian Pongam trees are also a supplementary host plant for this little bug, the hammock skipper, Polygonia leo. And we're able to raise some on there and able to get a couple all the way through, the caterpillars all the way through to adult. So the hammock skipper guys feeds on natively, uh, feeds on a tree called um, Jamaican dogwood. All right, and I have the, the information on that plant here below. And J Jamaican dogwood is a very common plant in the Florida Keys in the tropical hardwood hammocks. And you can find it in Miami-Dade County as well. And, but, but once you get to Broward County, you start, you start not seeing them as much. They, they need that real, um, you know, that really specific environment in order to grow. And that is the tropical hardwood hammocks of Dade County and Monroe County. So Polygonia Leo is actually a very common butterfly in the hammocks of the Florida Keys and in Miami. And uh, because, of the, because of the planting of the, of the trees, of these Indian pine gam trees, they've actually been able to ex extend their range up into um, Palm Beach County. And I think they may even be found further north just because of the host plant, uh, the supplemental host plant that they uh, have been able to uh, survive in habitats that aren't typically their habitat. Uh, and so that's why we found them here in Palm Beach, or, I'm sorry, I'm in Broward. That's why we found them here in Broward County. We don't have any of their native host plant anywhere near us, but uh, this pongam trees that exist in this parking lot uh, of the shopping center near our house um, has enabled us to have close access to this beautiful little skipper. Now, this is a, 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 a fairly large skipper. It's, you know, got a wing, an inch and a half wingspan, maybe close to two inches um, at some point. Some of the larger females might be closer to two inches. Sexes are similar. Uh, the dorsal side is just a, like a jet black, like brownish black, and it's got these little spots on the forewings. And um, underside, as you can see, is mottled brown. And when they're fresh, they have this really cool, like iridescent violet thing going on on their inner forewings. And and on the hind wing. And so really cool that we get to see that uh, some purple, iridescent purple on a skipper butterfly. Uh, they, they feed on the, the adult's nectar on a wide variety of different flowers. I think she's getting ready to fly here. Um, they feed on a wide variety of different flowers. I found them on Biden's. I found them on uh, Brazilian pepper. I found them on, oh gosh, what do they eat? Uh, they love uh, bloodberry, the um, Cordy glabrosa. They've, uh, oh gosh, many flowers. They, they, they feed on the blooms of their Jamaican dogwood. There is a, there's a wide variety of flowers that they will use as a nectar source. Um, I've found them on, this is actually coin vine. My coin vine in my backyard is in bloom. So I'm using this. I've seen them on the coin vine blooms in the uh, summertime. And so, uh, it's, it's a great bug. It's about the same size as a 
Florida purple wing butterfly. And when you're walking through the hammocks of uh, North Key Largo, you know, and you're looking for purple wing butterflies, you have to sift through these guys because they have the same habits. A lot of times when, when this adult butterfly flies, it, it lands, when it lands, it lands on the undersides of leaves. And that's a, a similar habit to the Florida purple wing. And so the, uh, they'll land on the undersides of leaves, they'll land on the, the stems of trees. Uh, they, they typically don't land on the, on the top side of any of the leaves. And so, uh, gosh, what else about the hammock skipper? Uh, they're found all year long, and I found them in every month. They, they're, they're very common, very widespread. They don't have um, broods that they go through. Um, you know, it, it's just a common, it's a butterfly that just breeds consistently all year long. They do come out with more abundance in the late spring and early summer when the Jamaican dogwood trees, their native host plant, they flush out all their new growth. Uh, they, they drop all their leaves in the early spring and they go into a flower full bloom in like April early May and then they flush out their leaves and that's when the the uh, they, they lay a lot of eggs and a lot more of the caterpillars have new growth to go through so the next you know the next uh, several months you see a lot more of the adults flying simply because there's an abundance of the host plant you know so if you really want to see a lot of hammock skippers in the keys and I would come down the month of June or July, well, I would say May, June, and July would probably be the best time of the of the year to see these guys in abundance. Um, but that's pretty much all I got for you guys. You know, we have we're doing life cycles on these various different uh, butterflies and moths of the Florida Keys. This is the hammock skipper. Oh, by the way, they fly really fast. Let me show you just how muscular the thorax is on this butterfly. So I'm, I'm looking at it straight from above right now. And the, the, the thorax on this butterfly is so muscular. When it flies, it, it zooms. I mean, it's like, you, you can hardly see it. It's, it's, they're so fast when they fly. Uh, as are most skippers, or just about all skippers, they're very muscular thorax. Um, they have these cool little antenna, like a, a, a skipper antenna is has got that big club at the end like a butterfly but then it's hooked at the end um typical of most skippers they have a pretty long proboscis i wish you would open his wings for me um they've got those little three little spots on on the underside of the uh four wing but she's you know this this guy right here he's just uh you know he's just drying his wings and chilling getting ready to fly and, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed this short video of the hammock skipper. Um, if you haven't done so already, guys, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more butterfly moth activity and action to show you. We've, we're raising all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope, hope to see you soon. Give me a thumbs up and comment down below if you've ever seen a hammock skipper uh, or if you've ever raised a hammock skipper. They are pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool body and pretty easy to raise. You just got to um, know what plant to look for. So, guys, take care, and we'll see you out in the field. Let's get out there.